I'm at home today and it's nearly night time. It's getting dark outside. When it gets dark, we turn on the lights. The lights at home need electricity to work. Can you think of anything else that needs electricity? We use electricity when we watch TV. When we heat something up in the microwave. And we can even use electricity to run a car. This is an electric car and it gets its energy from electricity to work. But how does an electric car use electricity to move? Do you know how an electric car works? Let's find out. How does it work? Electric car. To find out how an electric car works, I've come to an electric car centre. Over here, we have an electric car that uses electricity to move. And here, we've got a fuel-powered car. Fuel-powered cars use diesel or petrol to move. They might look the same, but there are some big differences. You must never play with the controls or open the bonnet of a car without a grown-up, but I've been given special permission to tell you how it works. When I turn the engine on, it makes a noise. Did you hear that? It's like a <laughs> sound, isn't it? The engine is burning fuel to make energy so the car can move. But as it burns fuel, it creates fumes which go into the air and they can be harmful. This is called pollution. But under the bonnet of an electric car, I can't see any engine. Look, there's just a space. And you can even put your shopping bags in it. But how can a car move without an engine? Whoa. Look at this. It's the skeleton of an electric car. The windows, doors and the body have all been taken off. So that means we can see inside it. Can you see this large black box? This is the battery. And it's the battery that stores the electricity which is used to power the car. At the back here is the electric car's motor. It uses electricity from the car's battery to turn and that will make the wheels turn so the car moves. Right, I think it's time we took an electric car for a drive. Now, let's switch on the electric car and see if we can hear anything. There was a little beep to tell us that the car had switched on, but now what? Nothing. There's silence, and that's because the electric car doesn't have an engine. Instead, it has an electric motor, and the electric motor doesn't make any noise. And because it doesn't burn fuel, which makes fumes, it doesn't create any pollution. Let's go. So if an electric car doesn't use diesel or petrol, how do we charge the battery to give it more energy? This is an electric charge point. You must never go near or play with a charge point, but I've got special permission to show you how this one works. To charge the car, I need one of these. It's called a charging cable. This is what we use to connect the charging point to the car. Now, electricity can flow from the charging point through the charging cable, through this socket, and into the batteries inside the car. The batteries will store electricity and use it for when the car needs to move. But how does the electricity in the batteries move the car? To find out, I think we need to take a closer look. When we switch on an electric car, electricity flows from the battery through the cables to the motor. The motor is made of two parts, the stator and the rotor. An electric current goes through metal coils. This makes a magnetic field. The magnetic field turns the rotor inside the stator. The rotor is attached to the axles of the car. And as the rotor turns, it makes the wheels of the car spin. When we move the car forward, electricity flows to the motor and the car moves. When we brake and slow the car down, some electric cars recycle the energy from braking. 
and the energy is stored inside the battery to be used to power the car again. That is so clever. Can you see the screen just here? It's called an energy usage screen and it has a dial on it. The dial tells if the car is using energy to drive or recycling energy because it's braking. I'm going to go for another drive, but so you can see what happens on the energy usage screen, I'm going to put one of my special cameras on the dashboard. Now we're ready to go. As I drive the car away and accelerate, the dial on the energy usage screen moves to the right. That's because it's using energy. Now the car is braking. The dial moves to the left because it's recycling energy by charging the battery. And because the car is storing energy, it can keep going for longer. How brilliant is that? I loved pointing out how electric cars work. What was your favourite part? Can you remember the name of the part of the car that stores electrical energy to move the car forward? That's right, the battery. Do you remember the sound the electric car made when I turned it on? It made a little blip. And did you see the energy usage screen on my special camera? It moved right when I was driving and left when it was recycling energy. We may use a car if we're trying to go somewhere that's a long way away. But often, if something's close by, I like to walk. I like to walk in all weathers. When it's raining, if it's a sunny day like today, and even when it's windy. We can feel the wind blowing, but do you know how wind is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Wind. To find out how wind is made, I've come to the seaside! Wind is air moving all around us. It looks like there's nothing there, but air is made up of millions and millions of tiny particles called gas molecules. We can't see gas molecules with our own eyes because they're so tiny, but we can feel them as wind. Wind can do lots of clever things, like move big fluffy clouds across the sky. It can make waves on the sea. And even turn massive wind turbines, which make electricity. We can even have lots of fun with the wind and use it to fly a kite. The kite is noisy flying in the wind. Blow in lots of different directions. To find out which direction the wind is blowing in today, I've made this. It's called a weather vane. But before the weather vane can tell today's wind direction, I need to draw each direction in the sand. Do you know what the letters mean? That's right, this is north, south, east and west. The arrow on the weather vane will point in the direction where the wind is blowing from. So, let's see what happens. The wind is blowing from somewhere between the south and the west. We call this the southwest. So, the wind is blowing in a southwesterly direction. We can also make wind using a fan. When I turn this on, the blades spin round and round really fast and the blades push the gas molecules in the air forward and I can feel that on my face as wind, which is perfect to cool down on a hot day. We can even make wind using our breath. If we breathe in and blow out hard, it makes the gas molecules we breathe out move quickly so we can make wind so we can blow out birthday candles. the gas molecules move around us on a windy day. 
Well, one of the reasons is because our planet, planet Earth, is made up of land and sea. And it's the different temperatures of the land and sea that create winds. To show you the difference in temperature between the land and the sea, I'm going to use one of my special cameras. This is a thermal imaging camera and it shows us how hot or cold things are. Can you see the sea is purple? That tells us that it's really cold. Now, if we take a look at the land, can you see the difference? It's yellow and orange. That means it's much warmer. The sun heats the land up quicker during the day than the sea. But how can temperature make it windy? The land heats up the air above it and this warm air rises up. And we say that the area below the warm air has low pressure. The cool air above the sea doesn't rise and we say that that has a high pressure. When the warm air above the land rises up, it leaves a space and the cool air with high pressure above the sea can move into it. And we feel this moving air towards the land as wind. Do you remember what happens to hot air? That's right, it rises. And we can see that happening. I'm going to show you how using a glass bottle with a latex balloon that I've put over the top and two bowls. One of them is full of hot water, and the other is full of cold water. The balloon is trapping air inside the bottle. But can you see that at the moment the balloon is floppy? Watch what happens when I put it in the hot water. Look, did you see that? The hot water is heating up the air inside the bottle. And as the air heats up, it's filling the balloon just like the air above the land. Now watch what happens when I put the bottle in cold water. The balloon has gone floppy again. <laughs> That's because the cold water has cooled the air inside the bottle and the cool air has moved from the balloon back down into the bottle, just like the air above the sea. I've had lots of fun at the seaside finding out how wind is made. What was your favourite part? Do you remember what wind is made of? That's right, gas molecules. Did you hear the noisy wind when I was flying my kite? And did you see the different colours on my special thermal camera? Orange and yellow is warmer and purple is cooler. <laughs> So the next time you feel the wind, you'll know how it's made. And if you see an electric car, you'll know how it works. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things all around us, exciting things.